Hey everybody, my name is Wally Khan and I'm a first year SRNA, a student registered nurse anesthetist. I've been in CRNA school for about seven months now and in this time period I serve as the president of my cohort and I also assist faculty with conducting interviews for the incoming classes. Now, as you may know, if you have researched CRNA schools or you are an ICU nurse who wants to get into CRNA school, you know that it's a competitive process. There's a lot the schools are looking for and one of the things that they really focus on is your nursing school GPA. The purpose of this video is to answer a question that so many of you have asked me on my personal page, but also a question that commonly comes up. You know, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a CRNA in nursing school, but now I've become an ICU nurse and I want to go to CRNA school, but I don't have the best grades. Can I get in? You know, I've sat for the last several months on interview after interview after interview with the dean and the assistant dean of my school, and I've noticed a trend. And I've asked faculty, what are you looking for in a candidate? Is it just the grades? I mean, does everyone need to have a 4.0 to get into CRNA school? And despite what anyone has told you, the answer is no. So the focus of this video is to help you understand that you are more than a grade. You are more than a 4.0 or a 3.9, you are a person. You are an individual with capabilities and capacities and life experiences that go way beyond just a paper application. This video is going to highlight all the different ways that you can strengthen your application and stand out as a candidate. Because when I was applying to school, what my mentors told me was, it only takes one. It only takes one interview, it only takes one school, it only takes one opportunity for you to tell your story. And when you're given that opportunity, you must be the best storyteller there is. You must be the best storyteller there is because there is no one that knows your story better than you. So let's get started. Let's talk about some ways in which you can strengthen your application and increase your chances of getting to a CRNA school. So the first thing, I don't have the best grades. Can I still get into CRNA school? The answer is yes. Irrespective of what anyone's told you, I'm telling you, yes, you can. Now, you can't have a 2.5 or a 2.9, but you know, if you're in the threes, 3.2, 3.3, 3.5, and I know personally people that have gotten into school with a 3.0, these are some things that you can do. The first thing that you can do for yourself and your application, tell your story. Who are you? Schools want to know, faculty want to know, who are you as a person? We all know you're a nurse. Everyone knows you're an ICU nurse, right? Because that's one of the requirements. But who are you? What is your story? Why or how did you struggle in life? Because they wanna know if you have the tenacity to overcome obstacles in your life. Do you have the grit? And that's a key word that you wanna highlight and implant in your brain. Do you have the tenacity to overcome hardships in your life? Because that's telling of what kind of a person you are. That's telling that CRNA school was very tough. It's hard. I mean, it is very hard and you're going to have to sacrifice. What are some events in your life that you've overcome that show us that you're a resilient person? Point number two, and a lot of people overlook this, but if you research how med schools and pharmacy schools and CRNA schools are conducting interviews, this will come up. Emotional intelligence. You know, when you become a CRNA, you're going to be in an OR, right? You're going to be in an operating room with surgeons, plastic surgeons, cardiothoracic surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, vascular surgeons. You're going to have circulating nurses. You're going to have anesthesia assistants. You're going to have the regular OR nurse. You're going to have the cleaning crew. When there's a code happening, Everything is out of whack. Everything is out of control. People are screaming. Things are going, you know, haywire. The surgeon's screaming at you. And as you know, everybody blames anesthesia. But are you the kind of person that not only understands himself or herself, but do you understand other people? Do you possess the emotional intelligence to read the room, right? To react and respond in a manner that is not inflammatory, but understanding and conducive to the growth of a team. Emotional intelligence. And the point of me telling you this is for you to research and understand what emotional intelligence is. You can be the smartest individual, 
but you may not possess that emotional intelligence, which may eliminate you from a set of candidates. The next thing, and it goes back to, you know, tell me about yourself. You may not have the best GPA. And that's fine. Maybe you weren't as, you know, a studious of an individual in nursing school or undergrad. But the next thing, point number three for what you can do if you don't have the best grades from nursing school is take additional classes. Meaning, if you're an ICU nurse right now, take classes at a university, at a grad school that are reflective of your ability to be in a advanced practice program or a doctorate level program and still hang with the best. Meaning, can you take an advanced physics class and pass? Can you take a grad level chemistry class or a grad level health assessment or pathophysiology class? Like go and take a class and show faculty and show the administrators that yes, I didn't have the best grades. You know, I might have slacked off a little bit, but here is what I am doing right now as an ICU nurse. I'm going back to school. I'm taking these classes to show you that I want this and that I may not have been X type of student back then, but I am doing something right now to show you that I want this. Like don't go back to school and take basket weaving, right? Advanced basket weaving. <laughs> That's not going to reflect who you are as an advanced practice nurse. So take something to boost your you know, prerequisites for grad school. And there's many CRNA programs that will allow you to take some of these preliminary courses prior to you starting school. And I know personally, advanced pathophysiology, advanced health assessment, chemistry, and physics are some classes that are really well respected and looked at that can really make a difference on your application. Step number four, how to boost your application. Community service. Now people like to downplay this, but I'm telling you as someone who is reading through applications, who's asking applicants questions with the faculty by my side, they want to know, do you care? Do you care about other people? Do you give back? Or are you some self-obsessed individual who wants to be a CRNA because you want to make more money? because you want to increase your scope of practice, because you want the alphabet soup at the end of your name to continue so you can add more letters. Or is life bigger than you? Is it greater than you? That's what they want to see. Are you involved in civic engagement? Do you volunteer? Do you go above and beyond what you're expected to do? Right? Because that's defining of the type of person you are. I know what an ICU nurse does, right? I mean, all our faculty were ICU nurses. They're CRNAs. They know what a CVICU nurse does. They know what a trauma nurse does. And that was my background. They know what a MICU nurse does, but they don't know what you do, you know, in the underprivileged community that you come from. They don't know, you know, what the climate, the socioeconomic climate or the, the, the civic engagement of you, of your community are. And that's your time to shine in your application to tell them who you are. But you won't have anything to say unless you've actively done something. And you know, maybe while you're in this process of refining your application for a school, you just may end up learning something about yourself as an individual and your capacity to give, which goes hand in hand with nursing. Because that's what our profession really is. It's about giving back to people. It's about taking care of people that we may not necessarily see on a regular basis in our life. And perhaps being involved in your community, this may be a chance for you to also further cultivate yourself as an individual. I believe we're on step five to spruce up and strengthen your CRNA school application. Your work experience. Now, this may be something that's very self-explanatory. I know that schools want two to three years of ICU experience. Well, what if you work in a low acuity hospital and you've been stuck at the same dead end job and you know that you're not really being challenged. If you show on your resume, hey, I worked at a make, for example, I worked at a MICU, a medical ICU. And then I wanted to be challenged. So I chose to go and transfer to a CV ICU or a level one trauma center where I was doing surgical ICU and trauma ICU. You have something to tell 
You can say, you know, I wanted to advance my skill set. I wanted to be challenged. I wanted to see more disease process. I wanted to work in a more dynamic work environment. So I took the initiative to go to a different unit. And that actually speaks for you. That says a lot about you. Now, this kind of goes hand in hand with this point. Letters of recommendation and who they're coming from. You know, and I specifically asked, you know, one of the assistant deans and I said, do you actually read the letters of recommendation? Do you actually like follow up on them? And he's like, you know, when it comes down to candidate A and candidate B and they're neck to neck, every little thing counts. So when you're looking for someone to speak on your behalf, Obviously, you're not going to find the person that dislikes you the most on the unit or that had nothing nice to say. You're going to find someone credible, someone who actually speaks to your intelligence, speaks to your work experience, speaks to the type of nurse and individual that you are. Choose those people, right? And don't just do it because they're doing you a favor. These people should really be able to speak to how successful you will be in a rigorous and dynamic doctorate level program. I believe we're on step six now. Now let's talk about certifications and pre-entrance exams. As you may know, as of 2020, a lot of schools have removed the GRE requirement from their application process. Now this may work to your advantage or it may not work to your advantage. If you are living in a state or you are applying to a school that still has a GRE, and I know we all have our differences of opinion about how we feel about that exam, but our opinion doesn't matter because that's what the schools are looking for. Take the time to really study. Get your grade in that particular exam up to the qualifying scores. Really try your best. And you may have to study more than just a month before the exam. You may actually have to purchase some books to study. The next thing that goes hand in hand with this is your CCRN, right? Your Critical Care Registered Nurse Certification. Many schools are now almost mandating that you have that. And if you don't, that may be that tiebreaker that I was talking about between other candidates who are neck to neck with you and now they're really looking for pennies and scraps to see which one is going to have just that little bit of that, that hair of a difference in the application because someone is just like you, just as competitive, just as hungry and that one thing may be the defining characteristics between those two applications. And I'll conclude this video with this, and you can make this your step or point number seven for strengthening your application if you don't have the best grades. Leadership. Leadership. You know, if you follow the AANA, which is the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists, and if you're living in the same time that I am, you know that there's a lot of political challenges that CRNAs face. Right? There's a lot of political conversations that are happening behind the scenes, behind the OR, you know, outside of your school. Are you someone that's invested in not only making yourself better, but the people that you're working with, the people that you're working for, the organization that you represent? When we become certified registered nurse anesthetists, we become a part of a larger body, something that's bigger than us. Did you serve? on a platform or a committee in your hospital, did you have the potential to serve so you can make your hospital better, so you can make your unit better? Because all these things add up. All these things add up. So when you graduate as a CRNA, are you invested right, in speaking for your profession, in speaking for your fellow colleagues and demanding you know, the representation that you need? Whether it be you know, the, the the continuity, whether it may be the scope of practice that you're yearning for, whether it is the, the you know, to be able to practice the full scope of your licensure and training, this is where it all comes together. Now, in summary, let's look at all these things that go beyond just your grades, your story. It is very specific to yours. Tell your story. Emotional intelligence. Are you able to understand that life is bigger than just you? That there are emotions involved in healthcare that are beyond just you? 
going back to take classes to demonstrate that you have the capacity to take a higher level class and, and succeed in it. Community service. Are you invested in the place that you live? Do you care about people other than yourself? Can you show that to us? What have you done? Your work experience. Speak to it. Don't just say you did ICU because that was the requirement. Did it challenge you? Did it help you grow? In what ways? They want to know. Again, tell your story. Work on your certifications. I'll give you an example. One of the things that I did when I was applying was, I went and became an ACLS and PALS instructor. It's not a requirement and you don't have to, but I wanted to show them that I was willing and capable to go over and beyond what the requirement was because I wanted it. And I was gonna do anything to show that. And lastly, leadership. Show that you're somebody who's able to rise to the occasion and lead. Maybe that's not you and that's okay. But if you have if you have the potential and if you have a, an opportunity, show that you're gonna capitalize on it. So as we conclude this video, don't be disheartened if you weren't the best student in nursing school. Don't be disheartened if you've been out of school for a while. The takeaway message of this video is you are more than a grade. And I know you hear this over and over, but I'm telling you from someone who wasn't a straight A student in nursing school, but here I am. It's about one third of the way done with CRNA school. And it almost sounds surreal when I say it right now. In exactly one year, I'll be starting my anesthesia residency. And so I'm not just saying this for the sake of saying it. I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from someone who has heard from the echo chamber, right? Of people that are in position to let you into programs. So what I want you to remember, it only takes one. It only takes one school. It only takes one interview for you to get accepted into CRNA school. You may not have had the best grades in nursing school, but your grades don't necessarily tell your entire story. You do.